let us pray loving heavenly father once again thank you for bringing us together on the first day of a new week to worship you to praise you and to listen to your voice oh lord sanctify our heart our mind our soul our body so that we can offer a meaningful worship unto you be with us oh lord bless us and bless this service through jesus christ oh lord we pray let us all praise god by singing the hymn 811 thy kingdom come o god hymn number 811 let us pray page number 35 o god light of the hearts that see thee life of the souls that love thee strength of the thoughts that seek thee to turn from thee is to fall to turn to thee is to rise to abide in thee is to stand fast forever although we are unworthy to approach thee or to ask anything at all of thee grant us thy grace and blessing for the sake of jesus christ our redeemer amen holy god holy and mighty holy and immortal have mercy on us holy god holy and mighty holy and immortal have mercy on us holy god holy and mighty holy and immortal have mercy on us let us humbly confess our sins to almighty god lord have mercy upon me a sinner 
Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Almighty God, our merciful Savior, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who forgive their brothers and sisters and with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The collect for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. O sovereign God, who urged us to be strong and courageous and entrusted us with a ministry of reconciliation, grant that we would not be afraid or discouraged to be the ambassadors of Christ so that we could go out and proclaim and people would repent and believe in the gospel through Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Now we shall have the first lesson. The first lesson for this morning service is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, reading from verse 1 until 9. Joshua, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to, your, to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the, right, to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Here ends the Bible reading. Thanks be to God. Now we shall have the second lesson. The second lesson is taken from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, ending at verse 10, chapter 6. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ, God making us appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain, for he says, In a favorable time I listen to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. 
Behold now is a favorable time. Behold now is the day of salvation. But put no obstacle in any one's way, so that no fault may be found with your ministry. But as servants of God, we recommend ourselves in every way by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness, for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson is chosen from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 6, verses from 7 to 13. St. Mark, chapter 6, verses from 7 to 13. Jesus sends out the apostles. And Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Here ends the gospel lesson. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Now let us all sing together the hymn 796. Lord, thy ransom church is waking. Hymn number 796.
Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I greet all the members and all friends who watch this service all over the world. May God bless you. The topic given for this Sunday is people of God, ambassadors of Christ. People of God, ambassadors of Christ. <clears throat> to have the title of ambassador is truly an honor to bestow on someone to represent a nation to another nation. It is clear that ambassadors or envoys were usually sent as a sign of friendship and goodwill and to make an alliance. As an ambassador of Christ, one is such in the same vein. Today we are going to meditate on two passages. One is the epistle lesson, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses from 16 to 20. Then the gospel lesson, St. Mark, chapter 6, verses from 7 to 13. In the epistle lesson, Apostle Paul calls himself an ambassador of Christ. He speaks of himself as Christ's ambassador in Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 20. I am an ambassador in chains. I have to preach the gospel boldly. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, he says, all Christians are the ambassadors of Christ. In the gospel lesson, Jesus chooses 12 men and made them apostles, 12 disciples, and they are also called ambassadors. Let us turn to St. Mark chapter 6, verses from 7 to 13. And Jesus called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. First of all, we look at the mission of the ambassadors. Jesus sent the 12 disciples out on a preaching mission and he gave them power over demons. That's what we find in the gospel lesson. He charged them to take nothing for the journey and then he said to them, I give you my spirit, my power, my authority. 
So he gave them his power over demons. He sent them two by two. Look at this. Six pairs. He sent them two by two. And later on, during his ministry, he sent 70 disciples. Again, two by two. St. Luke chapter 10. If you re read the first verse, you will know that Jesus sent 70, two by two again. Why two by two? There are a couple of reasons why Jesus sent them out this way. First of all, it fulfilled the requirements of the law for every testimony to be established by the words of at least two witnesses. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15. Numbers chapter 35, verse 30. And this was the method used by John the Baptist when he sent out his followers. John the Baptist sent two of his disciples to Jesus to find out whether he is the one who is to come or they should wait for someone else. So he sent two of his disciples to Jesus. Luke chapter 7, verse 19. And the early church employed this method. Acts chapter 13, verse 2. There, the Holy Spirit said to the disciples, Send for me Barnabas and Saul, two again. And then Acts chapter 15, verses from 39 to 41. There again, we find two sets of disciples. Acts chapter 15, verses 39 to 41. Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas separate. And Paul took Silas with him. Barnabas took Mark with him. They preached the gospel. And then Acts chapter 19, verse 22. Paul advised Timothy. And there he says to Timothy, two persons, again we find, Timothy and Erastus. There was a riot at Ephesus. Paul sends Timothy and Erastus. So that's why Jesus sent his disciples two by two. These are the reasons that we find in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament and in the Acts of the Apostles. Jesus gave them power. This word refers to inherent power. In a literal sense, they were an extension of Jesus as they ministered around the country. Jesus literally multiplied himself when he sent his disciples out with his power. So when Jesus sends with his power, it means he multiplies himself. He is there in their midst. His presence is there. And he is able to guide them. He is able to empower them. And he is able to lead them. That was the mission of the ambassadors. The second one that we see in this passage and in the epistle, mandate of the ambassadors. 
mandate of the ambassadors. As part of his commissioning, Jesus gave his men some very specific commands. It's in Mark chapter 6, verses 8 and 9. He charged them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. They are to undertake this assignment with their full faith in the Lord and in his ability to take care of the disciples. That is still God's plan for us, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We are saved by faith, and the Lord expects us to live by faith. The Lord who called us, the Lord who sent us, will take care of us, will provide everything. First of all, he gives his power, and then he gives everything that we need to propagate the message of love and salvation. Always trust the Lord to take care of you. Always trust the Lord and he will take care of all of us. And the third one is the message of the ambassadors. The primary message of the disciples or the ambassadors was a message of hope and salvation. Nothing is lost. People say everything is lost. No future. The future is bleak. But here comes a message of hope and salvation. We are not here to please people. We must not compromise this message, even an iota. However, those who rejected the offer of salvation were given a message of judgment. That's what Jesus tells his disciples, verse 10. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. And they will be brought to judgment. The fourth one, mission of the ambassadors. It is a threefold mission, bringing hope to soul and body. You know, there is one virus that has infected everyone on planet Earth. That virus is sin. To remove this virus, God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who came in great humility more than 2,000 years ago. He came down in great humility to save humankind from the bondage of sin. A virus, a deadly virus that has infected everyone. And that's why Jesus gives a threefold message, a threefold mission. The disciples were given this instruction. They preach repentance. We are all called to repentance. They cast out demon, verse 13, and they cure the sick, again verse 13. Apostle James calls for the anointing of the sick, but says it is the prayer of the faith that saves them. James chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. What is this all about, the threefold mission? It is about renewal of persons and the creation of new community. That's what the prophets say. 
particularly prophet Isaiah. God says to the people of Israel through Isaiah, I am going to create a new heaven and a new, new earth. Everything is going to become new. So it is about renewal of persons and the creature of new community. That's what the epistle lessons tells us. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 following. From now on, therefore we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new person, he is a new creation. The old one has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them, and interesting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you, O Corinthians, O Christians, O followers of Christ, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What a beautiful statement of faith. When one is in Christ, that person becomes a new creation. And we are here to do the ministry of reconciliation. So it is about renewal of persons and the creation of new community. Freedom from all the powers that hold human beings in bondage. Freedom from all the forces and fears that destroy life. The fifth one, mark of the ambassadors. People judge the message of Christ by the life of the ambassadors more than by the words they spoke. That is what is expected of us. It is expected from all of us that we should live a life that is worthy of God's calling. People want to look at our life. We should set an example to others. Dom Helder Kamara, the saintly Brazilian bishop of the dispossessed, used to tell his pastors, missionaries, and catechists, he used these words, sisters and brothers, watch how you live. Your lives may be the only gospel your listeners will ever read. I repeat, sisters and brothers, watch how you live. Your lives may be the only gospel your listeners will ever read. And he said a very short prayer. Forgive me, Lord, for the times when my lifestyle distorted your gospel. Forgive me, Lord, for the times when my lifestyle distorted your gospel. Our lifestyle should not distort the gospel of Christ. Hudson Taylor, a famous missionary, said these words, God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. What a beautiful statement of faith. God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. We have to do God's work in God's way. And God is not looking for people of great faith, but for individuals ready to follow him. Hudson Taylor again. 
God is not looking for people of great faith, but for individuals ready to follow him. And he goes on to say, the great commission sending forth the disciples, sending forth the church. The great commission is not an option to be considered, but it is a command to be obeyed. Everyone has a responsibility. We are all ambassadors of Christ. We cannot say, no, only those who are ordained and those who serve are considered to be ambassadors. I am an ordinary member of God's church. No, this is a great commission. And this great commission is not an option to be considered, whether to become an ambassador or not. But it is a command to be obeyed. So we are all goodwill ambassadors. We are all goodwill ambassadors. So these are the five points I want to place before you. Mission of the ambassadors, mandate of the ambassadors, message of the ambassadors, and the, again, the threefold mission of the ambassadors and mark of the ambassadors. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us remember, as people of God, we have a great responsibility. And we have to fulfill that responsibility in our families, in our church, and in our society. And that's why God has called us with a great calling. And let us submit ourselves once again on this Lord's Day so that God can send us out into the world to preach the message of hope and salvation. God bless you. Amen. Let us profess our faith to the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us all and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we shall have the announcements. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A very special greeting to the members who celebrate the birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. May God bless them and use them for his glory.
I thank you for responding to our appeal. Thank you for sending your contributions through net banking, through online banking, and through checks. And I thank the members who came forward to offer their contribution towards Parivalaya. Continue to pray for our ministries. Continue to pray for the poor and the needy. Pray for our senior members, our children. Pray for all the families. And let us pray to God to bring an end to this pandemic so that God will open a way for us to come together once again as one family to worship him with all our soul and with all our heart, with all our strength and with all our mind. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for this new day and for this new week. We thank you for the great privilege of worshipping you on the first day of a new week. We thank you for this great privilege, though we remain at home. We are able to participate in the church service. We thank you, O oh Lord, for this online service. We thank you, O oh Lord, for all those who have taken a lot of efforts in bringing out the best so that we can watch and participate in the service Sunday after Sunday. At this time, very especially pray for our members to celebrate the birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. Bless each and every one of them. We commit all the families of Egmore Wesley and Broadway English Wesley in your hands. Bless them, O oh Lord. Continue to protect them and fulfill all your plans and purposes. And we pray for the sick and the poor and the needy. We very especially pray for doctors, nurses, and all health workers. Protect them, O oh Lord, from this deadly virus so that they can bring healing touch upon the infected persons. We pray that you may give wisdom to the leaders of our country, the leaders of the world, so that they can take right decision to control and contain this virus from spreading. We commit our state of Tamil Nadu in your hands. We pray that you may bring down the veracity of this deadly virus. And be with us throughout this week, O oh Lord. Bless all our efforts and endeavors. And we thank you for all that you have done in and through us. We thank you for answering our prayers. We thank you for the fellowship that we enjoy in your name. We pray that you may continue to worship you and praise you. And we pray that you may strengthen our fellowship so that we can grow in love and faith. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, 
and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Let us all sing together the hymn 272, Jesus shall reign wherever the sun. Hymn number 272. The Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. God bless you.